What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we've just got this really simple rolling hillside design. Now there's links in the description down below to the palette and as well as the canvas size that's all you're going to need for today's design. If you didn't already know I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel but I also post three more tutorials over on my Patreon. So if you're interested in getting some extra tutorials there's a link in the description down below so you can come and become a supporter of mine. And with all that said let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use the empty layer straight away in here and we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab these two colors here. So we're going to grab the middle one out of the two of them, so this one here. And then we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go right down towards the bottom and under calligraphy we're going to use the monoline brush. Now with this we're going to go ahead and create some really nice smooth curved lines that's going to allow us to create our little hillside. So I'm just going to zoom out my canvas just a little bit so I can go edge to edge, making sure we do that all together. And we're going to create our first little, just little hillside. So let's create a nice curve there. Hold your pen at the end and you'll get a nice smooth arc. And then drag and drop your colour in. Then we're going to go to our layers again and create another new layer. And drag it underneath that hillside. And we're going to create our second one. So we're going to move this one over here to the right hand side. And we're going to go ahead and just curve in again. Create an arc and just let that run out to somewhere roughly say here and because you might have gone edge to edge you can drag and drop your color into that space if you haven't just turn off the one in front and make sure you go edge to edge let's then go ahead and add one on the left hand side let's go to our layers and create another new layer and drag it underneath both of our hillsides so far and we're going to create another arc so we're just going to create one that just runs across edge to edge like so and then drag and drop your color in and I'm just going to grab my cursor and just move mine up just a smidge. Tap on my cursor. And then we're just going to create one that just runs in the back there. So we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer. Let's drag that layer all the way to the bottom. And again, we're going to create an arc. This one quite smooth though. It's not going to be too much of a high arc. So just a little something like this. Then we'll just go edge to edge. And then we'll drag and drop the color in. It's going to fill in that background area. Now I just want to make sure that this right hand side and this left hand side is even so I'm going to go back to my layers and grab the left hand side and just grab my cursor and just move it up just a smidge like so and then tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now of course we need to identify which one is which so we're going to go back up to our layers and go right to the top. We're going to tap on the layer and alpha lock it so we can only now paint within the shape that we initially created. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the top color here at the top of this column of two colors here on the right we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go to airbrushing and we're going to use the soft brush now i'm going to reduce my brush size to something maybe about sort of 25 percent and towards the top edge here i'm just going to start painting from left to right and you'll start to reveal that little hillside come back in we want to create a beautiful nice gradient between the two colors so something a little like that will do and then we're going to go back to our layer we're going to go ahead and go down a layer and tap on it and alpha lock it. So this is the hillside on the right. And we're going to add in that light tone as well over the top. So just brush left to right. Nice gradient of color. Let's then go back to our layers and do the same on the left. So tap on that layer, alpha lock it, and then brush from left to right again. Just adding in a nice little transition of color. And then finally in the background there. So we're going to go back to our layers, tap on it and alpha lock it. And we're just going to brush from left to right. Now mine's really small back there. So I'm just going to add in the tiniest little bit there on the distance. The next step now is to start working on the background and then work from the back forward. So we're going to go back to our layer. We're going to create a new layer and drag it underneath it. We're going to go back to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab this nice bright blue here in the third column from the right top color and drag and drop it onto the screen. What you're then going to want to go ahead and do is go to your colors and grab the second color in that column. So second one down. We're going to go to our selection tool. We're going to go to the option of rectangle. We're going to turn on color fill. And we're just going to create a box like so. It's just above our horizon line there. You can see like a third of our sky. Let go. And then let's go to our adjustments. Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right until we get to something roughly around about 50% and that will give us a really nice gradient. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. The next step is to then go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and grab our sun color here on the right hand side. So let's tap on that top right of the far right column. 
We're going to go to our layers and create another new layer. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to switch it back to calligraphy and the monoline brush. It doesn't matter what your brush size is. And then we're going to simply just draw a circle in the middle of the screen, hold your pen and also pop a finger on the screen. That'll give you a nice perfect circle and something for size like that is good. And then drag and drop the colouring. If you grab your cursor then and you make sure snapping in the bottom left is turned on, you'll be able to position that nicely in the centre of your canvas. So roughly here is the middle point. Let's just know with that orange line we're smack bang in the centre. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. What we're then going to do is just go to our layers and create another new layer and then drag that underneath our sun. And sticking with the same colour, we're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go back to airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger this time. We're going to go up to about 50% and just tap a couple of times just in behind the sun there. So every time I tap, we're creating more of a glow from the centre. And you can see there, if I just continue to do so, we're going to end up with a nice warm centre. And something like that looks pretty good to me. You've got a nice little splash of colour. While we're working on the background, let's add in our clouds. So we're going to go ahead and create another new layer. This is the final layer. So let's drag that above our sun. And then let's go to our colours and double tap in the top left hand corner to select white. We're then going to go to our brush library and for the first time in this tutorial we're going to go to calligraphy. And we're going to go right to the bottom and we're going to use the script brush. Now currently mine is set to, and so that should be alright, let's go to, let's go a bit bigger than that, let's go to 20%. And we're just going to create some little clouds in the sky. Now you want to leave a gap between all of your clouds and so I'm just going to Using the pressure of the pen, just create some nice random shapes and just letting them sort of trickle off, off to the right hand side there like so. And in this area, I just used a lot of pressure and I'll continue to do that say over here as well. So let's create another big cloud on the right and then the underside of it. Fill that in and leave a nice gap in between. And then just in behind our hills, I want to add some nice rolling clouds that are just behind here like so. Just creating a nice big puffy little cloud there in the back and then if you go edge to edge you can drag and drop your colour into the space. Now we're going to do the left hand side as well so everybody's clouds are going to look a little bit different so don't worry if they don't match up to mine completely and we're just going to create a nice rounded fluffy cloud set and then do exactly the same drag and drop your colour into the centre. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit even in terms of numbers so three on either side so I'm going to create another little cloud here and then another one here in the top left. So let's move that canvas up and let's just add this in up here. Let that just nicely run out. And there we go. We've got six clouds total, three on either side. Now we left the gap on purpose so that we can go ahead and go to our selection tool. Make sure color fill is turned off. So turn this off and go to freehand. We're going to go ahead and draw around our first cloud tap on the dot to make a selection. So we can't affect these other clouds that we've drawn in. And then we're just gonna simply go back to our eraser, tapping on it and we're gonna go to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're gonna reduce the brush size down to about 5% and we're just gonna gloss from left to right towards the bottom side of it, just fading out that bottom area. You can go fully transparent or you can leave the slightest amount there underneath. It's just meant to be nice and soft. Now, you don't have to do that selection every single time. If you've left a big enough gap like I have, you can just go backwards and forwards on the underside of the cloud and do something like that instead. The same in this area here, we're gonna just go backwards and forwards just to gloss out the bottom area. And there we go, fade that out. And if we take a look at the two, we've got nice faded out clouds and solid ones on the left. So let's repeat that on the left hand side, going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, fading out that bottom area and the same for the other clouds at the top and the same for this final one here and then zooming out you've got a nice cartoony sky there now that is actually the background all done so what we can do is we can go back up to our layers and we can pinch all four of those layers onto one so this will save on your layer count so we can pinch all of those onto one next we're going to go ahead and add the rolling hillside lines as well so we're going to go right up to the top of our layers and create a new layer and we're going to tap on its blending mode to so the N and we're going to change that to soft light. And then we're going to go back to our brush. We're going to go back to the monoline brush. 
and I'm going to make mine sort of in the middle there, so about 12%. And we're going to create some nice curved lines here that we're going to have to create nice sort of rounded shapes for. So we're just going to follow the curvature of the grass. We're going to create a curve like this. Hold your pen down to create a nice arc. And then from there, we're going to create another arc that just gets a little bit bigger, as you can see, towards the bottom. And these two have gone edge to edge at the bottom or touch the edge. And then if I link this up at the top, and drag and drop the color in so drag and drop the color into that space we end up with our first little hill there then slightly towards the left now we can create our next one so it wants to be smaller at the top the gap between the previous one and slightly bigger at the bottom so something like this and then just create another curve and again make sure it gets a little bit thinner towards the top so it's a bit thicker at the bottom and then link up your lines so that you can drag and drop the color into that space and you end up with your second hillside rolling line. Now on the right hand side, we're gonna create another one. So this side's gonna be a little bit straighter. So we're gonna create a curve. And then again, we want that gap at the top to be slightly smaller than it is at the bottom. And then over here on the right, we're gonna create a curve again. Something a bit more like that, what I initially drew. And make sure you link up your lines at the top, going all the way to the edge, and then drag and drop your color in. And there we go, we've got some really nice hillside lines there. So we're going to use this line work now to actually add it onto this hillside too. So we're going to go to our layers, swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. And then drag one of them just down underneath the top shape. And then it should sit in front of the hill on the right. Tap on the layer and clipping mask it. And then let's go ahead and go to our cursor. Let's first of all flip it horizontal and just see what we end up with. So we've got our lines here, they're obviously fairly large. So we can use the uniform option here just to scale them down in size and then we can just move them over towards the right hand side now you will end up with your excess at the top here so you just need to potentially edit that or otherwise just move it over to the right like i have you could even rotate it a little bit should you feel necessary just to follow that nice curvature of your hill and if you even want to you can grab your distort tool and just maybe drag the bottom out to the right hand side drag the top out to the left and then arc those lines out towards the left hand side so let's just go ahead and just bring this one down a little bit and extend this out. So I'm going to push my way to the left hand side a little bit more like this and then tap on my cursor when I'm done. So you can see my lines there are pushing way off to the left. And then we're going to go ahead and use these lines again but on the hill on the left. So we're going to go back to our layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab either one of them and drag it down underneath the hillside we were just working on and it will be in front ready for the left hand side. Tap on the layer and clipping mask it. Then go back to your cursor. We're then gonna go ahead and flip it horizontally here at the bottom. Move it off to the left hand side so our lines are pointing inwards. And at this stage, you can see the lines are pointing right into the center. I'm gonna potentially now grab my warp tool and just push this out to create more of a curve. Maybe bring this down and also just extend it so those lines run right off into the distance. So just curving this round a little bit more pointing those lines right over. So I've created that sort of shape, but if we take a look at what it actually achieves, we've created some nice curving lines that run off there. Now we're not gonna go ahead and add any lines to the little bit there in the background, it's too far in the distance. But what we do need to do is just adjust these lines and make them a little bit lighter. So we're gonna to go to our layer, the one that we were just working on, tap on your blending mode here and lower the opacity down. And I'm gonna drop this one on this occasion down to 45%. And then I'm going to go up to the next set of lines, tap on it, and I'm going to lower the opacity on this occasion to just drop it to about sort of 75. And then the ones right in front of us, we can go up to the very top, tap on them, and let's lower them down to about 90. And then tap away. So we've now got some nice rolling hills. We can start to add some extra pieces here at the front. So let's go up to our layer and create another new layer. We're then going to go to our colors. And we're going to grab this middle color here on the left hand side column so the middle color and then we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go back to calligraphy and the script brush and the brush size can be the 14 percent that we had initially in the memory and we're going to go ahead and create some nice cartoony blades of grass so just some nice little flicks here you can do them in pairs you can do them in trios it's totally up to you and we're just going to add in some nice little flicks of grass here and there you can do them on their own but we're just going to add in some nice cartoony sort of look to the hillside so 
we don't want to add in too much we don't want it to be too populated it's just meant to be nice and cartoony and i'm just creating nice little curves as i go nice little trio there and you can spread them out they don't need to necessarily sort of root from the same area you can nicely break it up like that and then i'm going to do the same as we get a little bit closer towards the camera here just towards the bottom there we go and then i think we'll just add a couple more over here on the right and that's it you don't want to go right to the edge because we're only going to cover that up anyway so there we go we've got some nice little bits of grass in there some extra little details let's then go to our layers and we're now going to start working on the tree side over here on the left now if you're worried about your layer count for a minute we are actually done with the hill so you can actually pinch all three of these top layers together that will then put them on one layer you can pinch the lines to the hill in the back and you can pinch the lines to the hill in the back again. You need to keep your hills separate though because we need to hide stuff in behind them. The next step we're going to work on is just over here on the left. So we're going to go back to our layers and create a new layer. And we're going to just drag it underneath the top layer for now. We're then going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this dark tone here. So second column, top color. We're going to go back to our brush library and making sure it's still the script brush, which it is. And then towards this left hand side, we're going to increase the brush size. Let's go up to about sort of 25%. And we're going to create some nice cartoony bushes here. So I'm just going to use the pressure of the brush just to create some nice rounded little bits of bush that's just going to run all the way to the right hand side there in the center and just then fill in that gap all the way off to the left. So that's going to be like a nice rolling sort of bush area. You can go back in and just add in some more bumps and lumps if you want to, to really sort of break up that rounded look to it. But ultimately that is what you want to try and achieve a little something like this maybe even a little bit bigger on the left so we now have a nice area there but let's add some extra color to it let's go to the layer and tap on it and alpha lock it let's then go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab the tone underneath it so the second color in the second column go back to your brush and we're going to go to airbrushing and the soft brush reduce the brush size down because it's only a small area in height maybe down to say 5%, let's make that down to five. And then just towards the top area of the bushes, we're just gonna gloss from left to right and just add in a nice brighter look on the top there of our little bush area there. So it's got a nice transition between the two green colors. Let's then zoom out. So that's that done. We can then go to our layers. Let's create another one over on the right hand side. So let's create a new layer, drag it down and underneath the right hand side hill. And we're gonna go back to our brush we're going to go back to calligraphy and the script brush. Let's then go to our colors and let's grab the darker tone at the top of the second column and repeat. But these ones are in the distance, so maybe reduce your brush size down to say 14%. And because these are further back, we just want them to be super thin and just get a little bit thicker towards the top of the hillside here. And that, that's pretty much bang on. We can just maybe just let that run out just towards the bottom there, get nice and thin maybe just add in the odd little bit that just sticks up quite a bit so it's nice and random there we go and just as we did before we're going to go ahead and go to our layer tap on it and alpha lock it we're going to go to our colors now and grab the second color in the second column go back to your brush library let's go to airbrushing and the soft brush again and more so just towards the left because this is such a narrow area we're just going to sort of blend the color from the left to the right and then just let that just fade out into that darker tone there we go so we've got a nice little sort of rolling hillside there you can add an optional one there if you want but because we've made this one nice and thin it's not really worth adding anything just on that hill plus now we're going to add in a tree that's going to live just over here on the left so let's go to our layers and let's create another new layer and we're going to drag it up and just in front of the bush that's on the left so turn it on and off just to be sure we're then going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the bottom color in the second column and we're going to make sure our brush is still set to the script brush so we need to go back to calligraphy grab the script brush and we're going to draw in the trunk of the tree now first thing you want to do is sort of start with a sort of light amount of pressure towards the top and then just get a lot thicker towards the bottom that always is a nice way to then sort of build from that point so you can maybe thicken it out at the bottom where the trunk sort of runs out maybe go back up it again a couple of times if you really want to thicken it out but i'm going to leave that nice thinner look towards the top and then just from any point you can then just start to branch out quite literally 
let's just create a branch there let's then maybe create another one here and then you can go back over that line a couple of times if you want to thicken it up as it makes its way back into the trunk and we'll create another one that just runs off onto the left hand side here so a little something like this we're then going to go to our layers and create another new layer we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the top color in this column and then continuing to still use the script brush we're going to use this as a guide here to then just create a nice wobbly amount sort of greenery on the top so let's just create some nice nice bushy sort of tree area at the top here and let's just make that nice and wobbly towards the top and just letting that run and there we go we've got our tree silhouette at the top we can drag and drop the color in and there we go we've got our first tree done now if you want to at this point you'll see now you can just refine it maybe you want to bring the greenery down a little bit more so it's not quite just top heavy and maybe even go in and add in some extra branches if you want to so now we're going to go back to our layer we're going to tap on the layer and we're going to alpha lock it because now we're going to introduce some extra colors in it so we're going to go back to our colors we're going to grab the middle color in this column so the second column middle color go back to your brush library and use the soft airbrush under airbrushing and we're going to make our brush size roughly around about eight percent and we're just going to gloss from the top right just blend that in towards the center area here we're then going to grab our colors and grab this darker tone here at the bottom of the third column and just introduce the darker tone just towards the bottom left area more so just a tiny little bit of extra color and you'll get a nice gradient then between all three greenery areas now let's go ahead and add in some cool texture on top of here using a random brush so we're going to go up to our layers and create another new layer and tap on this layer and clipping mask it to the top area of the tree we're then going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color here on the first column let's then go to our brush library and we're going to go ahead and go down to vintage and this one here at the top my riddle and the brush size is maxed out and then towards the top right we're just going to introduce this cool little pattern on top we don't need to introduce it too much towards the bottom left but something like that is good and maybe you can even overlap it a few times if you wish just towards the top right area but once you've added a sort of coat in here like so we're just going to go to our eraser Make sure our eraser is set to the soft brush under airbrushing still and about seven percent on my eraser there i'm going to start to just blend that out more so towards the top right so it's just meant to be a bit of loose sort of texture there nice cartoony look to it and there we go we've got our first tree done now what we should do is we're going to go ahead and save ourselves some time we're going to go to our layer and we're going to pinch all three of these layers together for the tree so pinch all three together then swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it Grab either one of them and drag it underneath our bushes that are on the far right. Now you won't see any change right now, but if we grab our cursor and we grab the uniform option, let's scale the tree down, let's flip it horizontally, and let's move it over here to the right. Now we will need to scale this down quite a bit more because it's quite a fair distance in the back there. So something a little bit more like this, and then tap on your cursor when you're done, and that will give you some nice sort of sizing between the whole landscape how far away this is and now it's just time to work on this foreground area here so we're going to go to our layers if you want to and to save on your layer count you can start to pinch some of the further back layers together so you could maybe pinch the hillsides you could pretty much pinch everything from this tree here at the top all the way down to this one here you can pinch all of those together and save yourself some layers because everything we now do is going to be right here at the front so I'm going to create a new layer that's right at the very top of my layers and then I'm going to go to my colors and then I'm going to go ahead and grab the first color at the top left of our palette and then I'm going to go to my brush library I'm going to go back to calligraphy and the script brush I'm going to make the script brush a little bit bigger now about 30 percent and we're going to create two bushes on either side now I want to leave a little gap in the middle so we're going to go ahead and just create a big sort of wobbly bush again using the same sort of pressure technique we did earlier and then drag and drop your color in if you went edge to edge and let's make a little bit of a different bush here on the left so just create some nice wobbly lines and then drag and drop your color in like so so we are getting right up to this sort of bush area we created up there and really framing our design now we're going to go ahead and go to our layer we're going to tap on it and we're going to alpha lock it we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab the second color in the column so the middle color we're then going to go to our brush library airbrushing and the soft brush 
and we're going to go ahead and just increase the brush size up to maybe sort of 15 percent and top of the bushes here we're just going to blend in this nice lighter tone so right at the top only and just blend that in because then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab a much darker tone so let's potentially grab this one here at the second column the top color and just towards the bottom right here just sort of blend that color out and also towards the bottom too and then the same over here as well let's just blend this out towards the bottom area i've added quite a lot more over here on the left than i did the right just to change it up a little bit and then let's also add this really cool texture on top of this area here too so let's go back up to our layers and create a new layer let's tap on the layer and we're going to clipping mask it we're going to change the color and we're going to grab this color here so it's the green in what's the fifth column this one here then go to your brush library go back down to vintage and you already have the brush selected and then again the top area we're just going to start to coat that in with some cool texture so the top area only really we're going to blend it out again in a second like so and then if you want to you could go ahead and layer it on top of itself which gets a little bit busy not really my favorite but you can just leave it like that otherwise then we can grab our eraser should still be the soft brush which it is and we can just start to really blend this out towards the bottom might even increase my brush size on this occasion to 13 percent and just fade this color out so sorry if the camera is wobbling we're just going to blend this out towards the bottom there and then we're going to go ahead and add in all the cool grass and the flowers etc at the front here so we're going to go to our layers we can pinch this layer down onto the bush so let's do exactly that let's then create a new layer and we're going to start working on the grass to start with so we're going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and select this color here at the bottom of the third column we're then going to go to our brush library and we're going to make sure under calligraphy we're using the script brush now my brush size is currently set to 30 percent and what we want to do is we just want to sort of start with our pressure nice and light and then just let that run out towards the bottom and we want to somewhat start to curve all of our lines inwards towards the center so imagine you're trying to curve all the blades of grass towards the center and pointing towards our sun there so let's start at the top and just blend that down with a little bit of pressure and just let that thicken out towards the bottom you can put a couple close together if you wish but try to leave little gaps where you can but just a couple next to each other tends to look pretty good and then go do another one here let's then do another one here and let's do another one right next to it and i want to vary up the height so i want to just create another one here like so and then maybe we do another one that's sort of very curving there we go add in the odd couple that really lean really curve over and that'll give you grass a nice look to it and then on the right hand side we'll do the same except they curve more towards the left now so it's always about sort of directing the user's attention towards the center or to wherever you want them to take a look so we're just going to create this with the grass here nice curve lines just maybe add in the odd stray that just flicks off to the left let's just add in some nice bigger lines here and you want to add a good amount of weight to them because shortly we're going to add in some nice details within the grass so just add in another one here maybe another one that just runs a little bit higher and there we go we've got some nice grass lines in there I'll maybe even just run one in from the side there now with the actual grass itself we're going to go up to our colors we're going to go ahead and grab the tone over here in the middle of the first column we're going to go to our layers and first of all just create a new layer for a moment and we're going to reduce the brush size down we're going to go down to about four percent because each line here of the grass we're just going to end up with a nice thin line that just runs through the center of it it's a little bit like this so don't worry too much about the angle and whatnot you just want to run a nice little line running through the grass you don't have to do it on every single one we can keep it super thin my brush size is four percent and so we're just gonna run these lines in like so through every single blade where we can if they're too small we don't have to here for example these are very small so i'm gonna have to try my best to try and get it in but this one here i'm gonna leave let's do another one here this is going to be like a really nice little extra bit of detail can't do it in that really thin one you can just about do it in this one and even run some lines
happens through those. Now we did this on a separate layer on purpose, so we can go to our eraser, we can make the eraser a little bit bigger, say sort of 15%, and just towards the tops of them, we're just gonna blend that green out. So we're just gonna fade off the top of them completely. And that will give your lines a nice gradient that runs back in to the color of the grass that we initially drew. So that's really cool, nice little effect there. And then we've got your first little pieces of grass. Now what you can do at this point is go back up to your layer and pinch those two together. We're then gonna create another new layer and let's drag this one underneath the bush at the front here. Let's go back to our colors and grab the color here at the bottom of the third column. And grab your brush again, making it the script brush, but make it a little bit roughly around about sort of 20%. And then just behind the bush, we're just gonna add in the very odd little bit of grass that just, it's just behind here, behind the bush, just to show that there's a little bit something else going on behind there. And especially more so here towards the center where we can just add in some cool little blades of grass, maybe a couple paired together and the odd one here as well, just sort of running in from behind the bush, like so. There we go, so we've added some cool greenery on the outside. Next, let's go ahead and add in some sort of wild flowering. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. But let's drag this up and let's move it up towards the very top for a moment. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our colors and we're gonna grab this very dark tone here at the bottom of the fifth column. And my brush size is set to the 14%. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna create our first one here on the left. So we're gonna create a very thin line here that's gonna act as sort of the stem. And then from here, we're just gonna start adding in sort of the leaf that's gonna run off of it. So it's like a oval shape in a sense, but it's pointed on either end. And we're just gonna add in a couple more of these up and down this stem. So there's another one. I'm just gonna add in another one. Now you can reduce your pressure if you want. Mine's quite heavy in terms of it's quite large right now. So you may wanna just reduce your weight a little bit with the brush, but we're just gonna go up and down here. We're only gonna create this once and we're gonna duplicate it a few times. So it's gonna create these really cool little petals here with leaves either either on the side and then they get a little bit smaller towards the bottom. We just create another one just here. A little something like this. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna duplicate this a couple of times. So we're gonna go to our layer, go swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and let's then start to adjust it. So I'm potentially gonna go ahead and flip it horizontally so it faces the wrong way. I'm gonna rotate it back to the right a little bit and just move it off to the left-hand side, just slightly out of frame. And I may even just scale this down so it looks a little bit different to this one, just like that. And pop that on the left hand side and then we're going to go to our layer again we're going to go back to the original one and swipe it to the left and duplicate it we're going to grab our cursor let's uniform this down maybe rotate it and let's put another one just here too so maybe somewhat in this little gap and if you want to you could always grab your warp tool and just really adjust it and just really change it up from the original so i'm going to make mine a little bit sort of narrower towards the top here and try to keep some of its original sort of character, but a little something like this. Now just be aware that you just need to make sure it touches the bottom. So grab your cursor again and just move that down towards the bottom of the canvas. So it's all about now about duplicating it a couple of times and moving it from left to right. So we're gonna go back to our layers. I'm gonna duplicate the original. I'm gonna grab my cursor. I'm gonna flip it horizontal so it moves and points in towards the center. I'm gonna reduce this one down and put it smack bang here in this gap. There we go. And I'm gonna grab and put one more here on the right. So I'm gonna go back up to the layer, go back to the original, which is just this one here. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. I'm gonna grab my cursor and flip it horizontal and move it all the way right over to the right hand side. And now I'm gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now what we're actually gonna do at this stage is we're gonna to go to the layers and we're gonna pinch all of these together. So we're gonna pinch all of them onto one layer. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the grass tap on it and use the option of select. So now we've selected the shape of the grass. We're gonna go back to our layer and go back up to the new set of greenery we added here at the top. Then we're gonna grab our eraser, tap on your eraser and change it. Let's change it to calligraphy and let's go back to the monoline brush. Let's reduce the brush size down to say about 20%. So if I use down here in the bottom left as an example, if I now erase this selection of the grass, 
out of the shapes that we just drew initially. I'm now showing that this grass sits in front. Obviously this blade here is currently sat in behind. So if I wanted to move that in front, I just have to erase this bit here. Now we don't want to make sure it sits in front of everything. We want to at this point just create how we want the landscape to look. So we can go ahead and remove this bit of grass here. And then that now pushes that back in terms of the layering. So it's all about sort of creating the, the depth effect. Here, for example, I'm just going to erase this line here. So this blade of grass sits in front and this one too, but it sits in front of this bit of grass here. So it's just again, picking and choosing where we want the grass to sit in front. There's no grass around this one at all. So we can just move straight over to the one on the far right and I can pick where I want this to sit. Now I think it would look pretty good if it came from behind the grass here. I'm gonna go ahead and just erase from here. And then it will nicely just sit in behind there. But in other areas, it sits on top. So it's about creating nice little bits of depth. So if I tap on my cursor there, my selection tool, if I zoom in, you can see here, look how cool that looks. It now sits integrated into the grass. And the final step is to create some nice little daisies that are gonna sit at the front. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors. And for the daisies, we're gonna go ahead and grab, let's grab this dark tone here. In fact, let's grab the darkest tone. This one here at the bottom of the fifth column. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to the monoline brush. We're going to make the monoline brush. Let's make it size wise. Let's take a look at what that looks like. That looks pretty good to me. We're just going to drop it all the way down to 1%. And we're going to create some daisies again that lean in towards the right. So we're going to go ahead and create a little line here, which is going to be the stem. So we can create a nice curve. And then from there, we're just going to create some nice minimalistic sort of little bits that stick on the stem. So little bits that just come off of there. Then we're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here in the middle of the fourth column from the right. And we're going to make the brush size. Let's make it roughly, what's that, 50%? That looks a bit, that might be a little bit too big. Let's reduce that down to 40. And we're going to go ahead and create the head of the daisy. So we're going to create one line up, slightly off centered. And then we're just going to create seven in total. So just make sure they go round in a nice circle. Add in the other one towards the bottom here. Another one here. Just trying to make sure at this point that it's nice and round. And then pop this one in here too. So these are meant to be quite minimalistic. Then we're going to add in some detail lines. So we're going to go back to our brush library. And then we're going to go back under calligraphy and right to the bottom to script. Reduce the brush size down to say, let's go down to 4%. If we go back up to our colors, we've got this darker tone here at the bottom of the column. So this one here, fourth column from the right, the bottom tone. Make the brush size, I'm gonna make it about 3%. And then on each petal here, we're just gonna start in the center and just create a very thin line that just runs across the petal. So a little something like this. Again, it's meant to be minimalistic, so don't worry about it too much in terms of it looking super detailed. You just wanna draw in this effect here. That's what you wanna try and achieve. And then when you're happy, we're gonna go back to our colors and grab the top color here on the fourth column from the right. And we can just simply draw in a circle in the center until you cover up that center spot, like so. And if we zoom out, we've got our first daisy there. And then with that, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate it again multiple times like we did before. So swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. Maybe grab your cursor, move it down maybe towards the left hand side. And again, we're gonna use the grass trick in a second to decide what it sits in front of. Maybe even reduce that size, size down, rotate it a little bit, pop it in a gap, tap on your cursor. I'm gonna duplicate that little one again and just add in a few more towards the bottom here. So move this one right off to the left to start with. Tap on my cursor. I'm gonna go back to the original one, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and again, just try and see where you can fit that in. I think I can fit one in just here. Tap on my cursor. I want to add a few down here, potentially six or seven. So I'm going to go back to my layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab my cursor. Maybe we could, let's think about maybe, let's go about rotating it a little bit more, straightening that one up. And so I can push it down here. Definitely scale this one down a little bit more, putting it just in behind there. 
and I think we could maybe get away with adding one more. So let's go back to our layers. Let's go back to the original one, swipe it to the left and duplicate it and just grab your cursor and see if we can maybe scale this one up or even scale it down and hide it right behind this blade of grass. So I'm looking now at what I'm definitely going to hide in behind and I'm definitely going to have to hide this one here because obviously it runs all the way up there. And now what you could do is you go back up to your layers. You could potentially pinch all of those daisies together, swipe them to the left and duplicate them, grab your cursor, flip them horizontally and just move them off to the right hand side. So it's like a perfect symmetry. If you don't want that perfect symmetry, you don't have to. You could go ahead and manually do it one by one on either side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to our layers. We're going to pinch the two sets of daisies together onto one layer. Then we've got our grass layer again. We're going to tap on it. We're going to select it. We're going to go back to the layer. We're going to go back up to our daisies. Grab our eraser. We've still got the monoline brush selected. And then each one you can decide where you want to put it. So I'm going to slice through this one here. This one here definitely needs to sit in behind the grass because it doesn't even reach the bottom. So I can just get rid of that there. I'm definitely going to do that here too. And I think I'll just chop through this bit here. So this blade of grass sits in front, but this one doesn't. And let's just add this one here too. Add in a lot more depth every time you do this. And you can leave the odd one if you want to. But I'm going to just get rid of this, put that one in behind, moving it across. That all looks fine to me. That also does. On this occasion, I think you have to bear in mind that if I got rid of the grass here, I would chop right the way through the daisies. You might, might want to just do that and then take a look at what it looks like. To me, that one just needs to sit as it is for a second. This one here definitely just needs to be chopped at the bottom. And this one here would look great if we just chop out the bottom here and we can leave this one right at the front and if we tap on our selection tool we pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four you end up with today's finished design i hope you enjoyed this minimalistic landscape rolling hill design as always be sure to share your designs with me over on instagram when you're done and if you didn't already know i post three extra tutorials every single month over on my patreon you can get your name featured in videos you can get sneak peeks of upcoming designs and three exclusive tutorials every single month and much, much more. So come on over to my Patreon. There's a link in the description down below. And today's equipment list as always is the Sketchboard Pro that you can always use code JOELCREATE to get yourself a nice 10% off of. I'm currently using the Upper Grip by Upper and I've got the Pen Tips Glove as well, followed by the Ghost Paper Screen Cover also by Upper. All my equipment will be in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.